Hello, beautiful people. It's me, Elisa Gary, and I am so excited to be able to join you today. I have something I want to share. Um, I woke up this morning and, of course, having my prayer time, time to talk to God before getting things started. And I started to kind of get a download um, about why your business is being rejected by those closest to you. Um, and I am going to encourage you to think a little bit evocatively with me because of the scripture I'm going to share, but I'm only going to share it the way that it was imparted to me. And then I feel like this is a conversation that we should have probably a little bit more intimately um, on the on a live. And so if you are open to that or you feel like, oh, we need to be able to talk about this a little bit more um, one on one, just comment hashtag we need a live um, and we will do that. Um, but of course, um, as we are revamping and beginning to push forward in this kingdom entrepreneur building season, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, um, comment, um, bring a friend in, someone else that you know that has a God idea, they're pushing um, in their uh, business, they are kingdom builders, they are trying to to um, cultivate their families and position them to be in a new place, to be able to seed and help others. And you think that they'll be able to gain and grow from this content. They are welcome here. They are welcome here. Okay, so I want to go into Mark 6, okay? Mark 6. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Um, I'm going to put my glasses on um, just because so I can see. Honey, this, this 40 is a mess. But um, I'll take them off because I feel like it's making a glare. Um, so Mark 6. So it starts with Jesus is rejected at Nazareth. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. Remember that. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom? and the power to perform such miracles. Then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon. And his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then it goes on further. Jesus sends out the 12 disciples. Jesus went from village to village teaching the people and he called his 12 disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. So freedom for the people, right? He told them to take nothing for their journey except a walking stick, no food, no traveler's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals, but not to take a change of clothes. And he gives them instructions. It says, wherever you go, he said, stay in the same house until you leave town. But if any place refuses to welcome you or listen to you, shake its dust from your feet as you leave to show that you have abandoned those people to their feet. And so the disciples went out telling everyone they met to repent of their sins and turn to God. Now, again, I said I want you to think a little bit evocatively. Um, we understand that Mark 6 is position and purpose to encourage us to spread the message of the gospel of salvation and eternal life through Christ Jesus, right? However... I challenge you, I challenge you. We know, at least as believers, that the message of Christ does not pick and choose the areas of our life that it involves. It goes deeper, it emerges, it transcends 
and shifts our paradigm because we what perish because of lack of knowledge and we are transformed by the renewing of our mind so that is imperative in every area and facet of our life especially as entrepreneurs especially those that are believed that they are called to be positioned to minister in the marketplace and build themselves as a kingdom entrepreneur a kingdom financier and to push groom coach cultivate train emerge birth others discipleship you see where i'm going with this when we think about a prophet we understand that these are god's mouthpieces these are people that walk in that office under the mantle to speak the word of wisdom, words of knowledge, to exhort, to discern, to bring um, nuggets and downloads of wisdom into the people of God's life, to help them to navigate in times where the God wants to use us as vessels to be able to speak into the lives of his people. We understand that. We also, though, understand the gifts of the prophetic. The gifts of words of knowledge and discernment and wisdom and all of those things and exhortation, all of those things, administration. And the word says that the gifts come without repentance. So for those of you that are in our community that are not even self-professed Christians, because we do not require that here, we require that you come and you're able to have a respectful conversation and hear the goodness and the gospel of God. And it is a known fact. It has been said in several different articles by multi-millionaires, people that run companies, that they gathered strategy on how to do things from biblical principle. That is a fact. You can Google that. You can Google that. I encourage you to do that, where there are biblical strategy that is implemented in all different facets of business to include the NASDAQ, how that's run, how um, Fortune 500 companies are run. Um, it's biblical strategy to include, I'm, I'm prior military, right? Battle buddies. You heard it here in Mark 6. He sent the disciples out two by two. We see in Mark 6 and 1, as we get to the end, when Christ goes to give guidance to his disciples, those he is partnering with to build the kingdom, he's imparting knowledge that he gained through, of course, prophetic revelation and understanding as he's ministering, right? That he, even though he is astonished, this is Christ astonished at the level of unbelief. He then creates and constructs a SWOT analysis. So we understand that in business, right? That is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats a SWOT analysis, and he says, okay, we have to rethink this. And he tells the disciples to do what? Go two by two. Don't take unnecessary things with you. I believe that when he says, don't take finance, don't take money, because there probably was going to be something attached to that. Many times we go into a God idea, a business venture, something that he's trying to birth through us, and we are pigeonholed from moving forward because of what we have or the lack thereof to take with us to birth that thing. If he tells us don't even bother to take it, that is one less thing that we have to tackle us to our ordinary. We're not even going into the new season, the new territory, based off of what we have now. 
But then this is the part that really shook me. And I said, I have to come on here and share this. Is why you're struggling with being rejected. Your business idea, your God idea. You're pouring your talents, your time, your energy, your money into this thing. And you cannot, you're astounded by the lack of support by those that are closest to you. And it's not because they don't see the value. We can see it in Mark 6, where it says in the beginning, like, where did he get all this knowledge? Where is he? But then as soon as they say it, then it's like, oh, but he's just a carpenter. His sisters live here. His mother is this person. His brothers and sisters, you know, his sisters live right around the block. You know, how many of you can identify with that? I don't know about you. I'm not a carpenter, right? But carpenters, if you hold that title, first and foremost, you cannot be lazy. If you're going to carry that, you're going to have to have results. You're going to see this was erected or you're going to know so-and-so built so-and-so. They built that and then we all tried to get on it and they fell through. It fell on their heads. It broke up. It didn't last. Like that is a profession that warrants respect because it speaks to not only the character of the person, their work is going to separate them even amongst several, many that hold the title carpenter. The good is going to be separated from the bad, the wheat and the tear, right? It's going to be separated. You're going to know them by their fruit. Biblical principle, right? So the fact that they kind of insult him with a strength. How many of you are being insulted by the strength that you show in your God idea? in your business venture, whatever it is. How many of you feel like that you're being um, downcast or, you know, dumbed down to others because of who your parents is or because who your siblings are or because you just looked at as you just, oh, that's just so-and-so around from the block. I don't care where you're watching me from. This message is equal, whether you're on, you know, Pennsylvania Avenue and Baltimore where I grew up, or you're in the middle of, you know, some bureau in New Jersey, or you're in uh, off of Lesser Hanaga Highway somewhere in LA, or you're in Queen Creek, Arizona, an hour outside of Phoenix, and nobody wants to drive down there because you're too far until they realize they really need you, and now they're sneaking down to get to you to get their hair done because you're the bomb.com, and the people that were close to them messed them up. Or you're in the, 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 the township of Soweto, in South Africa, it doesn't matter. People do the same thing everywhere. But this is where I force you to think evocatively and to apply Mark 6 to shift your paradigm about why your business, why you as a kingdom Builder is being rejected. The word again says, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He cannot afford to have your family, those closest to you. In the business world, we call that strong ties, right? Those are people that you're closely knitted to. You have some sort of influence over. You're constantly around them. If you begin to be able to speak into their life prophetically, let me touch on that. Prophetically, meaning that you are dropping words of knowledge and wisdom, guidance, you're exhorting, you're cultivating. 
You're tearing down strongholds of old thinking and finances and, and, and just having a job. And I'm not knocking having a job because we've all been there. But if you begin to push the gospel of freedom, freedom of time, freedom of finances, uprooting strongholds in, in, in a culture of being behind, of being debt culture, and you're now able to reach people in the most rudimentary area of their life, which is to provide for themselves, something that goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden, to now make it easier to live by the sweat of our brow and then purpose and empower the kingdom of God to create generational wealth within the means of those that are believers to give them time to not have to run in the rat race but to have time to worship and build intimacy with Christ? Oh my God. Oh my God. How dare you? Are you seeing now? Are you seeing now why you're being rejected? This isn't about your pies, baby. Your pies are awesome. And everybody knows it. That's why they want you to bake for the church this, the baking show that. That's why, you know, your, your design skills are on point and they ask you to decorate for every church or, you know, community service event. But then they don't want to hear you when you're talking about building a proposal or bringing you in for their personal events or seeding into your business so that you can go to the next level. That's why. Because your life is going to testify that there's something different about this one. Are you hearing me? If you're getting it, please come in. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. I still want to hear. I want to know if you want to have a live about this. I'm thinking you guys are going to want to have a live about this. Because I want to hear what you have to say. Because, see, I think that we are looking at ourselves from such a small lens of what we're doing. Christ says that he wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. Everything that we are doing is intricately woven into the facet of man and redemption and who we are. And how we're purposed to serve him. So, what have we learned? How do we move forward from here? Well, Christ tells us. He, one, implements the strategy of the Bible buddy, the accountability partner. But even before we get there, we see the exhortation. We see the seal of um, acknowledgement of strengths, of your polished nature, of the excellence in which you're operating from, of the knowledge that you've acquired and how it is baffling to those that are still in the same breath um, beating up on you with their words and discrediting you because of where you come from or who you're birthed through. Right? But what does he do? He continues to teach. And what is the other thing that we see? He's able to get a little bit done. Some healing is done. Some deliverance happens. I believe that many of us are in that space where we're operating in our God idea and we're seeing some things happen. We're seeing some jobs come into fruition. We're seeing some attainment of contracts. We're seeing some movement, right? But not much. And you're like, what is happening? What is happening? Why is it more happening than this? I can feel it. This is not what it's supposed to be because of your environment get out of your comfort zone 
go after the rest of the territory. Get out of just who you know. Get out of there. Get your accountability partner. Someone that is of like kind. Someone that can support you and that can remind you, okay, this is the strategy. This is what we're going in here to do. This is what we're offering. We know it's great. We know it's the bomb.com. If they don't want it, great. Shake the duff off your feet. Keep it moving. If they accept you, stay put it. Stay rooted. Don't be all over the place. Stay grounded where you are. Until you hear the voice of God to say it's time to move on. Make other disciples. Pour into them. Pour the goodness into them. If it's your food, pour that food into them. Nurture the people of God. Build strength in them to go out and do what their God idea is. And this platform, I'm challenged to build and to sharpen the minds and the paradigms of other kingdom entrepreneurs. To say, I believe in you. To say, I am praying for you. And more importantly, to have a space for those wounds and the daggers of rejection, of alienation, of abandonment, of lack of support. The mindsets of what I don't have, therefore I can't do to be cast to the lake of fire because you are a warrior. You were purposed for this. And there are people's destinies that are wrapped up in you doing what you were called to do in the marketplace. You got this. But you have to overcome being rejected and your God idea being rejected by those especially that are closest to you. I hope that what I've said here has been able to encourage you. I hope that it has challenged you to look at your God idea differently, to reshape your thinking and your level of accepting and walking in your authority and what God has given you to do in the marketplace and sharing your message and what to do the next time that you feel like you are not being accepted. Don't forget that we are continuing to build here on Access Granted, building kingdom entrepreneurs. Um, it's gonna be more information that's gonna be coming your way. We are steadily building out the Crown Institute. More information about that is gonna be coming as well as um, so, uh, the book that's gonna be coming out. Um, it's just so many things that I know it seemed like I was gone for a long time, that 18 plus months or so, but it was just lots of pouring in and downloads from God and him really showing me what he wanted me to do with this platform. Um, I believe that it is going to transcend. I believe that it is going to promote and bring so much healing. And I believe that it is going to give us the ability to break free and birth our kingdom projects that have been laying dormant for so long. I want to know about that in the comments. Let me know how I can pray for you. Let me know how how uh, us here at Access Granite can um, cultivate you. Um, I am still creating like all of the platforms and where that you can go to um, connect. I want to make sure everything is streamlined. But my email... Um, uh, thealisagary at gmail.com still does work. It still does apply. There's also a Facebook, Facebook group that is called Access Granted um, Kingdom Entrepreneurs on Facebook. You can connect with us in that group there as well. Um, and, um, and of course make, you know, put your comments below. Let me know, um, how I can pray for you, what your project is, um, guidance that you're looking for areas that you feel as though that you need support or a battle buddy to be able to help you overcome, um, restrictions or, um, self-doubt in 
pushing and birthing your God idea. I am so happy that I had this time to connect with you and I look forward to talking to you soon. Be blessed.